here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight Bob Arum's top rank incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, presents an evening of professional boxing for your entertainment. All the bouts tonight are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Let's get things started, ladies and gentlemen, with a four-round bout in the ladies' featherweight division. Each round will consist of two minutes. The three judges scoring this bout will be Carol Castellano, Patricia Jarman, and Al Siciliano. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Kenny Bayless. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. She's wearing black and white and weighed in at 125 pounds. She comes to us from Albuquerque, New Mexico with a record of 0-2, and, and tonight she's looking for that first victory. Ladies and gentlemen, here is BJ, Super B. Felder. And her opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red and weighing 126 pounds. From Canoga Park, California, she brings a perfect record of 7-0, five knockouts to her credit, Ladies and gentlemen, here is the knockout, Mia Rosales St. John. Okay, ladies, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you to obey my commands at all times. Keep the fight clean at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Jim, I don't know if this is a great leap forward for women's boxing, but with her record, E.J. Felker may have the distinction of being the first women's tomato can. <laughs> Although, as we mentioned, she feels as though she is improving day by day. Brenda Jean Felker. And as we told you, Mia St. John sees herself as a power puncher. She's in there looking to get her opponent out of there. Mia tells us she thinks, sleeps, Eats, breathes, boxing 24 hours a day. And she wanted to compete in this sport because she likes combat. That Brenda seems to be taking charge now. She understands she can lose, so she's in a good position now to defend herself and jump on top of me. He says that she learned from the first fight between the two that she just wasn't active enough. Needed to throw more punches, throw more combinations. That's what she's worked on in the gym. And in the first minute of round number one, it appears as though she's accomplishing that. Mir has some experience with Taekwondo, so she's probably defense first, if you know what I mean. So that'll allow you a little, someone jump on you and steal the show if you're not careful. One statistic left unmentioned in the tail of the tape, but totally visible to you now. Mia St. John, about, oh, 11 or 12 inches worth of hair down the back of the neck. Brenda Felter, half inch or so. She says she was inspired to this haircut by the movie G.I. Jane. Watch your hand, watch your hand. In fighting, along the ropes to close the round, a good counter right hand there by come on, come on. Brenda Felter and Felter has gone to the body and the head with effectiveness in round one. Mia hey. St. John's mother Maria Rosales says that her daughter was born to be a fighter. Okay, keep your hands up. Work her body, hurt her to the body. Okay. Vaseline, Vaseline, Vaseline. Get the water. My nose. Keep your hands up. Throw your punches from your face, not from your no. hips, okay? Not, you can't let this Fagala do that to you. Beautiful shift you did in there. Start doing that some yeah. more, okay? See how well get in there. Work. That's you it. You shocked her. Now you got to get bigger, right. hit her harder. That's all you need to do. This is nothing, all right? Easy, piece of cake. Okay? Try it. You're not tired. Minutes, you're not even tired. Get pissed. All right. This is it. Go okay. after it. Go after Here's Felter with a three punch combination. She looks like a dead end kid going up against a glamour puss. But in round one, by CompuBox numbers, Felter outlanded St. John 
23 punches to 15 and doubled St. John's connect rate. St. John throwing more punches, but landing at a much sparser rate. I think that Brenda Felcher kind of threw a lot of punches that she didn't really calculate that could take her oxygen away. So this round, she's going to probably spin trying to recoup, get a win back. So Mia should just take charge now. Two minutes can sometimes be like two hours. Well, Mia starting to wing punches from outside, and Felter immediately realized that that creates an opportunity up the middle, and Felter is scoring with shorter, quicker punches up the middle, while Mia tries to bang away with the wing shots. And with two minutes, you better wing a lot. You don't have much time for the calculating and coming down the middle stuff. You better wing. One thing Felter is doing that you don't see many women uh, prize fighters do is oh, to combination. Fight and also to try to play a little defense. It was an excellent one, two, three. Another. Good right hand by St. John. Slipped in Felter's guard. And there's a strong left jab by St. John. Now Felter pulls forward and goes to the body. She starts to wing shots from the outside. St. John goes to the body three straight times, looking to create an opening. Felt St. John to stand still a lot now. Better get close if you're not doing anything else. Get close to Mia. Mia says her knockout punch is the straight right hand. In this second round, St. John has gotten the better of it as she out physicals Brenda Felter, pushing her around the ring, bodying her off to create punching opportunities. Good fight. Good club fight. Good round. That's what I want. That's what I want. Keep picking it up the same way. Right. You got it now. Short punches, Short right, Bravo? Short punches. 16 or 17 minutes ago, Team De La Hoya pulling its bus into the parking lot outside the Thomas and Max Center. The temperature out there is about 97 degrees, but Oscar nevertheless bundled up in the sweatsuit, keeping the muscles warm as he gets ready for the main event. Oh, an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes down the road. Okay, don't just hit her elbows, come up underneath the inside. You gotta get busy and beat your ass all the way back to the body. Stuff like that. Now get busy and win right. this round. You can't give her a okay. last round, okay? okay. Yeah, but make it the last round. Come on. Hey, come on. Hey, come on. Hey, come on. St. John, incidentally, yeah, buddy, is a college graduate and has a, two children ages eight and six. Boy and a girl. Straight left hand for Mia. Sets the tempo in round three, scheduled for four. Harold Letterman, how'd you score the first two? Jim, I gave the first round to Brenda Felter. I mean, I thought she got inside and did a lot more damage. The second round, certainly Mia uh, outworked Brenda. I mean, she did all the work, she did all the punching. So I got it one round to one, 19 to 19. I tell you something, these two minute rounds are killing me. Every time I start to make up my mind, the round's over. But, you know, Mia St. John should really not leave that left arm stretched out all the way because every time she does, Brenda Felter gets inside of it. A little bit of blood coming from Brenda's nose. In round two, St. John's punch output more than doubled that of Felter. So Felter's energy level has gone down. Mia St. John's has gone up, and the pattern seems to continue in round three. Felter now throwing one punch at a time, whereas in the first round, she was able to attempt those combinations. She was talking about, yes, ooh, there's a good uppercut by Brenda Felter, but St. John keeps coming. And St. John made the mistake of throwing everything out the first round. She hasn't been able to recoup yet. Body punching. Don't push it, don't push. You know, Jim, the day of he fights like a girl is getting to be a compliment now. <laughs> a guy can fight like that, he's done something. Yeah, you fight like this girl, you're fighting non-stop. Mia St. John just never stopped throwing punches. She'll take them every once in a while. Oh, there's a hard right hand by Felter. She's starting to come back a little bit in the latter part of the round, but the first minute of the round was an energy festival for Mia St. John. The thing about Mia, whenever she gets hit, she gets right back in it. She doesn't get away and try to recoup. Hey! 
Big round from Mia St. John. And about 10 minutes ago, the arrival outside in the parking lot of Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez, who's been training at 9,600 feet altitude in Breckenridge, Colorado, surrounded by friends and family. And Back up with the light. Back up with the light. Family members close to him as he entered the arena here. Last and final round. Touch gloves when you come out. So both of the principals in the arena as we go back to Mia St. John's court. Last and final round. Touch gloves when you come out. Mia, listen. She's using your jab this round. Okay, jab her, jab her, make her go back with the jab. Straight right hand, okay? Straight right hand. And put some juice on it, okay? She's not doing this. Right, you got it. You got it. Right, go after her. Get inside. Start pounding some hard shots. Don't pit her paddle. Go, Pound her hard. All right, go. Come on. Here's St. John. A whirlwind in that round. As George pointed out, she didn't spend all of her energy early in the fight and has had much more for the last two rounds. Right hand over the top lands for Felter. Mia just continuing to rain punches on Felter. Some of them land, most of them miss, but the activity level in itself gives her the initiative in the fight. Watch your hands. Watch your hands. Hard right hand by Felter, and she's got something that'll work with that uppercut, George. If she keeps coming up the middle, it's she's, there. She's got to stay close to do it, though. Can't back away. Whenever the fight gets close, she's in charge. She let the inches appear, and then she gets behind. Don't be on the outside. Mia is tough. See the jab? They get closer to her and stay closer to her. Felter told her she's hoping to lose another 10 pounds and move down in weight so that she can fight women her own size. She's tired of facing the height disadvantage she Work faces out. Out. here and against her previous opponent. First uppercut for Mir. Every punch she throws is hard. She does not deliver a tactic shot. Everything is hard. She believes she can get a knockout. Come up, come up. Work out, work out. those body shots are gonna have someone tonight sitting in a hot tub trying to get relaxed. Eating soup through a straw. <laughs> those are hard shots by Brenda Felter. This has been another pretty good round for Felter. Similar to round number one. Mia missing a lot, but still throwing a lot. It's gonna be a tough fight for the judges to score. Oh yeah, it's uh, evenly matched. Jabbing now. Mir is jabbing. And they go the distance for the second time in 33 days. Mia St. John got the decision first time around. In a minute, we'll find out who was deemed the winner tonight. In Brenda's corner, they've cast their vote as they hold their fighter aloft in celebration. Here's Felter showing some real gumption in this fight. Good enough hand. What do you think, Larry? Would, would you say that St. John landed more punches, but Felters might have been more effective punch by punch? I don't know. I think uh, St. John was much more active, landed many more punches over the last three rounds. I thought she won the fight three rounds to one. You on board for that, George? No, I think the other girl with a left jab, more effective. It impresses the judges when you're jabbing and moving out of the way. Occasionally an uppercut. But she, in my mind, was a better fighter than I. Uh, now, are you talking about, did I say uh, so? Mia. Yeah, well, that's uh, the one I'm talking about, Mia. George. Yeah, Mia. Okay, so uh, both George and Larry vote for St. John. Let's see who the judges voted for. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Patricia Jarman scores the bout 38-38. She has it even. Carol Castellano has it 39-37. And Al Cisliano scores it 39-37. To the winner by majority decision, still undefeated from Canoga Park, California, the knockout, Mia Rosales St. John.
Bitter pill to swallow, I'm sure, for Brenda Felter. She goes down to her third defeat in three fights, but she looks like a fighter who's going to improve if she sticks with it. Could have been a draw. I would have gone along with that also because they both put out equally. What did you All say, right. Harold? I had it. 37. Three rounds to one. I agreed with Larry. I thought that the Mia St. John just outworked it the last three rounds. She was too busy. Yeah, generally speaking, the judges will always go for the busier fighter, Jim. Well, that's the last word on that one. Let's go back up to James Brown for the first word on the next one. All right, Jim, thank you very much. But for stamina, certainly B.J. Felton looked a lot better than she did in the previous bout. All right, folks.